welcome to today's tech talk on how to build a hybrid data lake and burst processing to Google Cloud Dataproc with Alexio. My name is Amelia and I'll, I will be your moderator. Before I introduce you to our speaker, I just have a few housekeeping items. All participants are automatically on mute throughout the session. We will be using Slack for Q&A, so please take a moment to join us on the community Slack channel, which is also copied into the chat box. Uh, and can be found at alexio.io backslash Slack. However, if you are having trouble joining Slack, no problem. You can feel free to message me or questions instead via the GoToWebinar control panel under questions, and I'll make sure we get to it. In today's session, I'll, uh, the speakers will give a brief presentation, then we will have a Q&A session uh, at the end so we can answer all of your questions. Uh, again, to ask a question, please join the community Slack channel or post your questions into the chat box uh, to me directly. Lastly, today's session is being recorded and will be available for on-demand playback. We will be emailing you the link to the presentation uh, following as well. So that's it for the housekeeping items. Let's jump in. Today's tech talk will start uh, with the presentation followed by the demo and the Q&A. And I'm very pleased to welcome Matthew Marin from Google Cloud and Adit Madan from Alexio. Matthew currently works as Google uh, Cloud Solutions Architect for Google Cloud, where he creates reusable assets to help companies of all sizes build their technical architecture in the cloud. And Adit is a core maintainer and PMC member of the Alexio Open Source Project. His experience is in distributed systems, storage systems, and large-scale data analytics. Without further ado, I'm passing it on to Matthew. Thank you. Hi. Uh, so my name is Matthew. I'm a cloud solution architect, um, and today we're going to talk about Alexio, Google, Data Lake, and hybrid things. Um, so uh, historically, many uh, organization and enterprises were originally thought that Data Lake uh, is more or less raw storage, and then came new capabilities with analytics and data science, and at a low cost because it could run on commodity hardware. Uh, so this led to aspiration of uh, self-service analytics on large volume of data, and companies spent uh, money to set that up, but in reality, uh, traditional data lake do not always mean, meet those expectations. And so many organizations actually struggle to uh, get critical business insight from their data, and they face different challenges. So, for example, in terms of total cost of ownership, um, it's hard to contain the cost at scale. Uh, it's a pretty big task. And uh, some analysis also show that companies currently use less than 1% of their unstructured data and about 50% of their structured data. Um, and structure is supposed to grow up to 80% by 2025. So I let you do the math, but basically it's gonna cost way more. And generally, uh, organizations should see less value. Uh, the second challenge is around scaling. Uh, so we hear a lot about from customers that uh, clusters run beyond 100% uh, capacity and data and compute are often co-located, uh, which makes workload compete for resources. And expanding cluster is uh, quite difficult due to the high load on master node. On top of that, uh, there are usually some projects around governance, but um, they're also quite challenging to do because there's not a single ownership that can govern all the data, uh, mostly part due to many silos. And the governance value and the possible advantages are not uh, clearly defined. Um, so it makes it hard to justify uh, budget prioritization for uh, this. And the last one is around agility. So Data scientists don't always uh, feel empowered to actually and autonom when it comes to uh, setting up their environment and uh, be able to uh, start working. So it actually unpair uh, innovation. So all those challenges uh, make it quite uh, hard uh, to actually uh, make the most of the data. And one of the reasons uh, that we're having this session is to show how uh, we can move parts uh, or at least work in an hybrid environment to leverage the cloud for this. And in terms of cloud, so uh, Google happened to have one. <laughs> um, 
where uh, we have a portfolio of products ranging from uh, managed open source uh, software to actual externalization of uh, internal product that we have, such as BigQuery. Um, and in some cases, some of the open source tools that some organization use are actually uh, come from some core tech uh, from Google and some white papers that we published and MapReduce is actually one example. So Google has a product at different uh, stage of the data lake stories. So in the ingestion, uh, storage, analytics and activation, uh, there is a product for every part such as uh, data flow, data proc, uh, BigQuery, cloud storage for um, storage. Um, and all those products uh, actually provide the data lake solution on the cloud platform. Uh, but also, this is our vision to be uh, fully cloud, but we understand that uh, we need to meet organizations and users where they are. And this is why we partner with uh, Alexio to provide hybrid solution. And Adit is going to talk uh, more about this in, in a few minutes. Um, so how do you get to the cloud and how can you leverage uh, the advantages that comes with it? There are a whole spectrum of possibilities. So the first one is lift and shift. And this approach generally sees uh, lower costs. So we can see uh, sometimes companies saving about like 30% um, of their cost when they move to the cloud. Um, and you get a chance to actually decouple uh, storage and compute. So for example, on Google, you could potentially use cloud storage uh, versus HDFS. Um, and it's some companies like this part because they don't need to rebuild everything from scratch. Uh, and many are emotionally attached to what they spent years building. And generally it actually works, uh, at least to a certain extent. And in French, we actually have a saying that says, uh, we often know what we lose, but we don't know what we gain. Uh, so lift and shift is, uh, is a good approach uh, with this state of mind. Uh, it has some downsides, such as the time that it might take to move the data, but also uh, being able to keep the data in sync uh, between on-premise and the cloud. On the other side of the spectrum, uh, you can modernize, uh, meaning you can actually use managed service and cloud native tools. Uh, you can still decouple uh, storage and compute and you also get access to fully managed services and sometimes uh, non-Hadoop options like BigQuery, for example. Um, so it is a change uh, and for some uh, non-digital native company it might be a big step. Um, so we want to meet in the middle uh, with the zero copy burst where um, we meet companies where they are and some companies and uh, there's no need to migrate the data, no need to predefine workload to move, uh, and it provides you with compute agility. So in the session today, we're gonna focus on, on this centerpiece, um, and we're gonna talk about how you can leverage Dataproc and Alexio to do this. Uh, so what is Dataproc? Uh, it's basically a managed Hadoop and Spark solution in the cloud uh, from Google. Uh, you don't need to re-architecture your application and code. You can actually uh, usually move uh, a lot of that natively uh, because it's uh, it's using the Hadoop and Spark ecosystem. It's mostly a processing engine first uh, where you can customize hardware, software, uh, and also get some features such as auto-scaling. And because it is quick to start, it provides agility. And we generally advocate for ephemeral clusters where you can actually start a cluster in a few seconds, run the jobs, and then kill the cluster when it's done. Uh, so it helps you save on cost, but also empower end users to uh, start the environment that they need. And you can leverage uh, other cloud products in it, such as, as I mentioned earlier, cloud storage. Uh, so Google Cloud provides uh, multiple values, and the first one is that it's fast. So as I said, you can actually uh, take a few seconds to minute to actually start a cluster, and you don't need to wait for um, processing power to, to be available for uh, your task. It's also pretty easy. Uh, which means that you actually don't need to focus on keeping the lights on and uh, you don't need to focus on your infrastructure, but you can actually uh, really use your data without having to worry about setting it up, managing, uh, maintaining all the, all the compute behind it because a big part of it is actually managed by Google. And it's also cost effective because uh, you can actually, as I said, uh, start a cluster and kill it when you're done. So you don't have to have like a long uh, running cluster 
that is running all the time even when people might not use it. Uh, of course, if this is a use case, you can still do it and you can even start multiple one as well. And because you have auto-scaling policies, you can even um, uh, scale those clusters up and down based on uh, based on the needs. And a sub-product of Dataproc, which we're actually releasing today, is Dataproc Hub, where uh, we enable administrator to standardize a notebook environment across the company. So instead of giving full access to data scientists uh, to Dataproc, you can actually curate and centrally uh, manage notebook environment and then provide group of users with only the Dataproc notebooks uh, that they need. Um, and then with those set of notebooks, then data scientists can actually uh, do their data, but also use uh, their favorite machine learning libraries, such as uh, PyTorch or TensorFlow, uh, in parallel to PySpark from within the same notebook uh, and other Spark options, obviously. Um, and on top of that, they can leverage existing data proc features like auto scaling or acceleration, because you can also use uh, GPU with it. Uh, with this, I'll give the microphone to Adit so he can explain more into details what uh, Alexio does. Thanks, Matthew. So, like Matthew said, uh, data is increasingly separated from compute. Uh, this is exactly the case for a hybrid cloud where your data resides on premises and you want to leverage uh, compute in the public cloud, such as GCP. Now, when data is remote from compute, you need a data orchestration platform. That is exactly what Aluxio is. So Aluxio is an open source data orchestration platform which moves your data close to the compute that is accessing it. So in this case, if your data resides on-premises, you don't need to worry about manual migration of data from your on-premises environment to Google Cloud. Aluxio, you, you will have a layer of Aluxio in the middle which would move your data seamlessly. Aluxio has a vibrant and growing open source community as you can see on this slide. Now you might ask, uh, why uh, do you want an architecture with a hybrid cloud? So what you get with a hybrid cloud is that you get the best of both worlds. You can continue to use your infrastructure on premise, but at the same time leverage Google Cloud because of all of the benefits that Matthew talked about. You can provision infrastructure on demand instead of uh, the long time it takes to provision hardware on premise. You can leverage the flexibility of a hybrid of a public cloud by running ephemeral compute clusters for bursty workloads. But at the same time, uh, there is a challenge of your data which is residing primarily on premise to begin with. There are various approaches to managing the data problem, and I'm going to talk about the solution with the Luxury in a couple of minutes. Uh, but the some uh, to give you a sense of some of the challenges of migrating all of your data, there are significantly complex uh, pipelines in place on premise, which are continuously changing data. And all of that cannot be migrated to a public cloud in some situations all in all, all in one go. So full migration from on premise to a public cloud can be slow. So the situation that we begin with, as Matthew pointed out, that uh, many uh, companies have these large Hadoop clusters on premises, which are compute bound. And they could also be storage bound, but the more common case that we see is that these com clusters are compute bound. That means they're running out of CPU processing power on premise, and they are not able to guarantee SLAs for their end users. They are using a whole bunch of frameworks uh, which range from analytics to machine learning and AI, uh, including Spark, Presto, and TensorFlow, as we have in these diagrams. Now, uh, since the on-premise clusters are running out of compute power, many people want to adopt a public cloud to migrate some of their workloads to the cloud. If the public cloud if your jobs running in Google Platform were to directly access data which resides on-premise, 
that typically does not work because of the slow network bandwidth and latency, high latency that exists between the cloud and the on-premise cluster. The second way to approach this is uh, you could manually copy all of your data from on-premise into cloud storage and then your compute running in GCP such as Dataproc would access data which resides only in cloud storage. Now, uh, that also is difficult because of the complication that I talked about in the previous slide that your data on-premise may be changing continuously. What that means is that there is a need to synchronize data which resides on-premise to the copy that you have in the public cloud. And uh, doing this manually is a tedious and time-consuming process. So this is where Aluxio comes in. So the first step in adopting a hybrid cloud architecture with zero copy burst is that um, the cluster that you launch in GCP, uh, such as Dataproc, you would have Aluxio installed on that cluster. Now, you don't need to worry about manual data migration from your on-premise cluster to the public cloud. Also, you also don't need to identify data sets which are of interest to your end user. So you could simply launch a cluster for the end user, not worry about migrating anything to the cloud at this moment. And that end user, when that end user accesses data from on-premise, Aluxio will notice the pattern of access and start migrating data to Aluxio managed storage in the cloud seamlessly. So the first thing that this caching ability with Aluxio does is that your on-premise cluster is offloaded both for compute, since you're using compute in GCP, and also for IO. So your HDFS cluster, it may be have a master node, which is heavily overused, bombarded by thousands of nodes. So Aluxio is actually moving IO off from HDFS into an Aluxio cluster and only accessing HDFS when the need arises. The second benefit, uh, which I talked about, is that Aluxio, you don't need to pre-identify data sets that you need to migrate. So you could simply uh, start accessing data in the cloud as soon as you launch the cluster. So there's as soon as you have the cluster, you can just start running your queries or your TensorFlow jobs as you see fit. On subsequent accesses, we guarantee local performance. And like I said, uh, we synchronize the changes from your on-premise. Uh, we detect the changes which occur on-premise and we make sure that up-to-date data is available in the public cloud. Now, the second thing Aluxio helps with is that Aluxio enables you to also migrate data to Google Cloud Storage. So the way that you can do this is that you set certain policies in Aluxio, such as you can say that uh, all data which uh, is uh, recent, which has been created in the last seven days, migrate that to the public cloud. And what this flexibility enables you to do is that this kind of makes the process of migrating to a cloud, a complete cloud solution much more gradual. Uh, and the uh, switching from your on-premise infrastructure to a cloud native infrastructure is much easier with this solution. And I'll go into more details of each of these steps in the next few slides. So Aluxio allows you to access data on-premise from your Google Data Pro cluster. In the meantime, Aluxio also integrates with the security infrastructure on-premise. So all of the infrastructure that you have for authentication for your end users, for authorizations using policies, Aluxio integrates with the on-premise infrastructure to make sure that when you're accessing data through the cloud, in the cloud, you still maintain the same security that you had on-premise. And in the cloud itself, Aluxio uh, integrates with, uh, Aluxio provides encryption and audit logging to meet your security requirements. So next, I'm going to dive into a few uh, features, key features in Aluxio, which make in a, which enable a hybrid cloud architecture. Specifically, I'm going to talk about four fe such features. So 
So in, in this picture, uh, what you see on the left-hand side is uh, an Alexio cluster, uh, Alan Luxio instance, which is uh, co-located with your data prop cluster. So the left-hand side, you can think of it as your uh, as everything you have in the public cloud in GCP. And on the right-hand side is your storage, which is on-premise, which is typically a Hadoop HDFS cluster. So you want to access data through these different frameworks such as TensorFlow, Spark, or Presto, and your data is residing on-premise. So the first thing that happens when you launch a cluster in the public cloud is that Alexio synchronizes the metadata between your on-premise cluster and the public cloud. So notice that it's not synchronizing the data itself. Data itself is synchronized on demand, which I'm going to talk about in the next slide, but Synchronization of the metadata itself uh, is much quicker than synchronizing the data. So that's the first thing that happens as soon as you launch a cluster in uh, launch a data prop cluster. Now the other thing to note here is that if files are mutated on premise, such as uh, the path that I have shown on the right hand side picture, if file one, the content of file one changes on premise, this file, this change will be reflected on the public cloud seamlessly. So in Dataproc, if you're accessing your, your if you have a Spark query, a Spark job, which is accessing file one, uh, after a few seconds, uh, the Spark job will be able to read the up-to-date data without you having to do anything. And if even if it was cached in Alexia before, Alexia would devalidate the cache uh, and you would be you would still be able to always read the up to date data so the way we do this is that we use uh, something in hdfs called inotify which sends aluxio a stream of events uh, which uh, occur on the hdfs cluster and aluxio synchronizes that with its file system in space now the second thing uh, that we have uh, listed here is the management of the data itself. So on the data proc cluster, if you have different storage resources, different disks, uh, and also memory resources allocated to Alexio, Alexio manages all the storage for caching data, which originally resided on premise. So once you access data on premise in your job running in data proc, Alexio would migrate data into Alexio managed storage on the data proc instances itself and keep it uh, for reuse across the same job or different jobs that a user might run in a, in a period of time. So Alexio can manage different tiers of storage like RAM, SSDs, or HDDs, uh, or hard disk drives. And uh, you uh, don't need to worry about migrating from one tier of storage such as RAM to SSD, uh, that is managed by Alexio seamlessly. And also if Alexio runs out of caching space, on the data proc cluster itself, Alexia can always fall back to the on-premise HDFS cluster and re-pull the data as in the required. Now, uh, another thing which enables Alexio, the hybrid cloud architecture with Alexio to be able to query data on-premise, and I'm talking specifically about structured data when you have data residing in HDFS and you have table definitions stored in a Hive Metastore with locations pointing to HDFS. You don't need to redefine these tables in the public cloud. So as soon as you launch a cluster in the public cloud, you can continue to point the data proc cluster in the public cloud to the Hive Metastore which resides on premise. And you don't need to worry about redefining the Hive Metastore locations to point from an HDFS location to an Alexio location. Alexio simply intercepts all calls by your query engine, such as Presto, to the HDFS location, and then all requests to HDFS are actually served by Alexio. So what this means is that just like the metadata for the file system, the metadata for structured data is also instantly available in the cloud, and this is especially important for ephemeral clusters, and it reduces uh, or eliminates the amount of manual work that is needed for you to start running jobs as soon as the cluster is spawned in Google Data Proc.
Now, the three uh, features that I talked about in the last few slides, they enable you to read data on demand from the on-premise cluster. So, uh, like I said before, uh, you have a cluster spawn in Google Data Pro, a Google Data Pro cluster uh, spawn in GCP. And as soon as that cluster is up, you can start reading your data. And just to reiterate the fact that you didn't need to identify which which data sets are of interest for your data scientist, and you didn't need to manually migrate any data to the cloud. Now, another thing that an admin can do is that an admin can set policies for different for migrating different data sets from your on-premise environment to the public cloud as and when the need be. So like I said before, one of the policies that you can set is that I want to migrate the most recent seven days worth of data to the public cloud. How this happens under the hood is that if you look at the center uh, picture, you have the Luxio file system namespace in green. You have different directories within the Luxio file system namespace, such as the data directory and also the users directory. So if you look at the user's directory, that's backed by one HDFS instance, and that data is only stored in HDFS. But the more interesting thing to note in this picture is that if you look at the data directory, the data directory is actually backed by two storage systems. So what that means is that your data directory was originally on-premise in your HDFS cluster, and it had directories such as reports and sales in HDFS, and you also mounted S3. So this is a concept that we use in Luxio uh, that any storage system that Luxio in, uh, interacts with is essentially a mount point to Luxio. So if you look at the directory data in Luxio, that's actually backed by two uh, HDFS and Google Cloud Storage. So uh, reports directory can be migrated from HDFS to your uh, Cloud Storage directory by setting the policies that we just talked about. What this enables you to do is that, for especially for ephemeral clusters in which the Luxio managed storage is short-lived and you don't want to continuously go back to the on-premise cluster over a slow network to read the data, you can have Luxio migrate data to Google Cloud. And on subsequent accesses to Luxio, you can, and when you spawn the cluster, you can set a priority in Luxio saying that if data is present both, in Google Cloud and HDFS, I want to read from Google Cloud. So what this means is that you won't go over the slow network to Google Cloud, but you'll go to a, go over a faster network within possibly the same region, uh, within the same cloud. So with that, uh, we will switch over to the demo to show you some of the things that we just talked about, and I will hand it over back to Matthew. Thank you, Adit. Uh, so we're gonna run a demo where uh, we already had uh, something set up and we're gonna set up something more or less live. Uh, so the idea is to have uh, three clusters. So two of them are already set up. Um, one is gonna mock an on-prem uh, cluster and it's gonna run on data proc, but it's uh, mocking. One is a normal data pro cluster without Alexio. Uh, so this one will be helpful to compare performance uh, against an Alexio cluster. And both connect uh, through a secure network peering over internal FQDN. And the third one is the one that we will create uh, through data proc hub. Uh, so data proc hub being um, a hub to centrally uh, create clusters with a specific profile. And in this case, the profile will be uh, Presto, Alexio, and Jupyter Notebook. Uh, so in the demo flow, I'm going to be the admin where I show how to set up uh, data proc hub on an AI platform notebook. Uh, and explains how to uh, create a data pro cluster configurations that support Alexio. Um, and then with those configurations, I can set a list of clusters that are available to a specific group of data scientists. And 
uh, I will provide Adit with a specific secure uh, URL that that, uh, that he can access to then uh, do his work as a data scientist. And, and Adit will be following him. Sorry. No worries. Uh, and in this demo, I will play the role of a data happy data scientist uh, who will receive the admin provided URL from my new best friend, Matthew, who happens to be the admin who did all the hard work of uh, setting up the configuration with Dataproc and Luxio. And I'll be able to launch a Dataproc cluster with a single click, uh, run some Spark and Presto jobs uh, within a few minutes. If I did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is uh, the cloud console uh, of Google and I am on the Dataproc uh, page within, uh, within the notebook menu. So as an admin, I will show how to create a hub instance um, that will provide data scientists and I will provide data scientists with a secure URL. And when they access that URL, they will be able to uh, see a form how to, that would enable them to start a cluster. So I go on a new instance and I have like different options, but I'm going to pick uh, the Dataproc Hub uh, option and I could say uh, Hub for Team uh, A. I can pick a region and a zone, uh, so you have access to all the compute region uh, and zone in Google. There's quite a few across the world. My environment is already predefined, which is the Hub. And the only thing I need to provide is a link to a cloud storage bucket. Uh, where I will have a YAML file that basically describes how I want my cluster to look like. So those files you can create manually, or you can actually uh, create a cluster and export the configuration. So if you want to create a cluster, set it up the way you want, then you can in one command line export the customization and the configuration, and then you can reuse it as a template for another cluster. I can also choose the machine configuration, different options, and then I click on create. Um, I'm not going to create because otherwise we will have to wait a minute or two, but I will show you the end result. Uh, so for context, this is what my environment, uh, environment file looks like. Uh, so a lot of the things are not required, but the one that is important is this one which as an admin, I provide a list of configurations. So for example, for Team A, uh, I want them to have an Alexio cluster, uh, another one with GPU, and another one with standard preemptible VM. Uh, so that would be an option. And all the declarative files actually live in a cluster that is accessible by uh, my hub. So I'm just gonna go back to what I have already created. So um, what I will get is like a hub, and when I click on uh, Jupyter Hub, I get to this page. And as an admin, I want to make sure it works, obviously, otherwise, Adit is going to ping me and be unhappy. Uh, so, he's going to show you what he can do with this. What I'm going to do is basically sharing this URL with him, um, and then he can uh, work from there. And I'm going to give you back. Thanks, Matthew. So uh, I just received the URL from him. And as you can see that we have different configurations that Matthew pre-configured for me to use, uh, which includes Aluxio cluster and Aluxio cluster with GPUs and some standard cluster and uh, standard cluster configuration without Aluxio. So for this demo, I'm going to use the Aluxio enabled cluster, which Matthew created for team A. And I'm just going to create choose the zone, and that's the only thing that I need to do as a data scientist. So I just select the cluster configuration and the region, and I just start my instances. So similar to Matthew, I'm not going to press start uh, in demo in in this demo today uh, because it takes a few minutes. Uh, but the end result of pressing start would be that within a matter of a couple of minutes, I will land up on this page which is a Jupyter Lab notebook, which allows me to start running my jobs, uh, including both uh, Presto, Spark, or anything else that is available on the data prop cluster. So for the task today, uh, I will use, I will run jobs on two clusters. One is the cluster that uh, Matthew created, that we created using data proc hub, which is the screen, uh, which is the tab that I'm showing right here. 
And also at the same time, I have a, a third cluster, which is a cluster without Alexia on it, to show you how the data access would look like if you did not have Alexia installed in Dataproc, but you were still accessing your data which resided on-prem. Okay, so to start, uh, I will run, uh, I will first run a Presto job, uh, of a TPCDS query using Presto. So TPCDS is an industry standard benchmarking uh, framework, uh, which you can use to compare performance of different query engines or different storage solutions as well. So when the cluster launched, uh, one of the things that it did was that it uh, configured a catalog for Presto. What this means is that it's just pointing to the location of your structured table definition. And I'll show you what that looks like. So uh, now that I'm in the Presto shell, uh, you can see that there are different tables which were originally on-premise. So we have three tables which were defined on the on-premise cluster. So as soon as the cluster in Dataproc is spawned, I already have access to these tables. I did not have to redefine anything and these tables are ready for me to start accessing and querying in the public cloud. So if you look at the metadata for these table definitions, you can see that the location for the tables is actually still pointing to an HDFS location on premise. So as you can see in the cluster name, the cluster in the data pro cluster is pointing, the tables in the data pro cluster are pointing to an HDFS location on-prem. And this is, <clears throat> and but even though it is pointing to a location on-premise, on this cluster, when I access the data, it's actually going to be intercepted by Alexio and it's going to be served by Alexio. At the same time, uh, I will, I'm going to run another query in the cluster without Luxio at the same time to show how the performance would look like with and without Luxio. So the cluster, the tab that I have open right now, it's uh, the cluster without Luxio. It also has uh, a catalog uh, pre-configured when the cluster launches. Uh, it's called the same, which is on-prem. So in, in this case, these are also, this is also pointing to the Hive Meta Store on-premise, but when you access the data in any of these tables, it's actually going to always fetch the data from HDFS and not go through a lot here. So I'm going to pick one of the TPCDS queries, uh, which is query number 44 to be more specific, and I'm going to run those, uh, run this query in parallel on both these screens. So the screen that I'm on right now is the Alexio instance of Dataproc. The screen that I'm on my right, uh, which I am on now, is the instance without Alexio. So what we can do next is launch the same query in parallel on both these instances. So uh, this query is going to take a few minutes. Uh, once it finishes, what will happen is that on the Luxio cluster, which I'm on right now, uh, it's going to fetch this data and cache the data in Luxio on demand. So like I mentioned before, you didn't have to uh, identify which data sets your query is going to touch. It's go Luxio is going to on demand fetch that data into your data prop cluster. And on the instance that I have on the right, I, like I said, it's just going to always hit HDFS. So while that is running, uh, another thing that I will do is that I will choose uh, my favorite notebook, which is PySpark, and I'm going to run a, a simple job in Spark once the Presto query finishes. So what this demonstrates is that uh, all frameworks that you have available on the data prop cluster are actually pre-configured for you to use uh, with Alexio, <coughs> with Alexio uh, uh, and still read your data, which was originally residing, residing on-premise. 
So the job that we are going to use for the demo today is it's a simple Spark count job. What that does is that it's going to read a five gigabyte file which originally resided on premise. Uh, and that file already exists on premise. And it's simply going to read the entire file and count the number of lines in that file. And the output of this would be the amount of time that it took to read the job the first time. And when I repeat the same job again, you will see that since it is being fetched into Aluxia and it's not going to hit the HDFS cluster, which is remote in a, in a different data center on premise, you'll see that there's going to be a significant performance difference uh, for this. So, uh, and uh, the difference depends on a lot, on a lot of factors a lot on the data, the network connectivity that you have, this number of files that you have, the sizes of the data sets, and all those factors. So this will give you a sense of uh, uh, there, would, there would still be a performance difference even for a tiny data set, which is only five gigabytes. So uh, if you look at the terminal with the Luxio, which I'm on right now, you can see that the Presto query that I ran, query number 44 from PPCDS, it actually finished quicker on Luxio than it finished, uh, and it's still running on the HDFS cluster. I mean, the cluster which is accessing data on-premise without Luxio. And the reason that even the first access to your data set on premise is actually quicker than the second cluster is that with Aluxio, if you remember, I talked about that as soon as you launch the cluster, Aluxio has synchronized all of your metadata on premise and pulled that into Aluxio, the Aluxio file system master. So a significant chunk of SQL queries is also metadata operations. It's not just your data, which resides, uh, which is going your data access, which is going to cause your query times to run slower. So you can see that the time that it took to for us to run this query on Aluxio is about two minutes and twelve seconds. Uh, what this did was it read about eight and a half gigabytes of data from your on-premise data center HDFS cluster and pulled that into storage that was available on the data prod cluster managed by Aluxio in about two minutes and 12 seconds. At the same time, when I ran the same query on uh, the data prod cluster without Aluxio, it took close to three minutes, read the same amount of data, but the data has not been cached anywhere. So once I run the same query again, uh, it's still going to take the same amount of time uh, about three minutes, but as you'll see right now that if I run the same query on the Luxio instance, it's actually going to be much quicker. So uh, this is kind of highlighting the data caching ability that we talked about with the Luxio. So this query is going to take uh, uh, about a minute or so. Uh, and uh, so just to reiterate some of the things that we just saw. So as soon as the instance the data proc cluster was spawned in data proc. You pretty much don't even need to be aware of Aluxio. You can run your queries in the same manner that you did in your on-premise infrastructure. You just have the same query, you have the same tables, you just start running your queries. So you didn't even need to, you didn't even see Aluxio in the picture anywhere. So you didn't see any Aluxio file paths, you didn't make any modifications to your code, you didn't even make have to make any manual uh, configuration changes as a data scientist. And you'll see that this is actually going to take uh, much quicker, uh, about a minute and a half. As you can see in the rate, uh, the original query took uh, read about eight and a half gigabytes of data in three minutes. And this is going to read the same amount of data in uh, much less time. Uh, it's going to take about a minute and a half, uh, which is more than a 2x speed up. And uh, this is a sample a dummy small data set to finish in time for the live tutorial, uh, but the benefits that you'll see is, are going to be much different for actual your actual production workload. So the next thing uh, that we'll observe is uh, just in case uh, you want to see access through the Aluxia scheme. So you'll ask, I mean, what we'll do is we'll do the same thing, except that 
uh, we'll use uh, Spark as uh, as our computational framework, and you, this could be a machine learning job, it could be a SQL job. Again, it, this is just a dummy account job, like I mentioned for this demo today. So if you run this job in Alexio for the first time, it's still going to hit the HDFS cluster, which was on premise. And uh, I'll run the same job on the instance over here. So uh, both, so this, if you can see that it took uh, about 13 seconds. Uh, and if you rerun it the second time on Luxio, it's actually going to finish much quicker than 13 seconds. So you can see that it only took about three seconds because the data was already cached in Luxio for the second run. But if you look at the instance on the, the cluster on the right hand side, which I'm on now, this is the cluster without Luxio, you can see that it always takes about 18 seconds to run. So the run that I kicked off right now, it took about 17 seconds. And if I run it again, it's still going to take about 17 seconds to finish. So with that, uh, once this finishes, I'm gonna move back to the slide deck and give you a quick recap of what we just saw. So as, as you saw, it took the same amount of time running the Spark job and also we saw what we saw was, actually, let me go back to the slide. Okay, so uh, as Matthew talked about before, we have three clusters up in the public cloud. One was the on-premise mock and two clusters in the uh, two other clusters, one with Alexio uh, and Presto as highlighted in the picture on the right hand side, and also a cluster without Alexio. So in the zero copy burst cluster with Alexio, we ran a Presto SQL job and a simple Spark job, accessing data from your data proc cluster on the left hand side, uh, hitting uh, Hive and HDFS, for Presto and only hitting HDFS for the simple Spark job. And once we cache the data in Alexio for the second run and any other subsequent runs of data uh, of the job, you saw that the performance was much quicker than when you access the data directly in your data proc cluster over a slow network, hitting the, always hitting the on-premise infrastructure. And the flow is something we already talked about. Uh, with that, uh, we have a few minutes remaining for any questions that you guys might have. Uh, thanks a lot for listening. I hope we all learned something new today. Thank you, Adit. That was fantastic. So we have um, quite a few great questions here. Uh, I'll just go in order that we receive the questions. Uh, our first question here for Adit is when syncing Aluxio in GCP and Hadoop on-prem, is there an Aluxio agent installed on-prem to watch all the data changes in Hadoop and automatically sync to GCP? And how long is the lag time if I need to use GCP data flow instead? So uh, for Aluxio, uh, there is no agent that is that needs to be installed on your on-premise infrastructure. So that's one of the beauty of the solution with the Luxio is that it's also minimizing the amount of changes that you need on your on-premise side. So you, the only changes that you need to make uh, is limited to minor configuration changes on your on-premise side, and the bulk of the work is done on the public cloud in the data proc configuration itself. So the way that Luxio synchronizes the metadata with the on-premise infrastructure is that there, Alexio doesn't have an agent, but HDFS itself has uh, an agent-like process which is embedded into the, the HDFS name node. And what that does is that it continuously scans the HDFS journal, looking at any new events which are actually modifying the HDFS cluster. And it, Alexio can subscribe to notifications for those events. So the HDFS name node is actually sending those events to Alexio, and that's how Alexio synchronizes its namespace with HDFS, and subsequently Alexio can also synchronize the metadata and data with Google Cloud Storage. 
Great, thank you. Um, our next question here, um, Fred did, is does Alexio support any kind of data masking when it processes data in the cloud? So uh, Alexio, uh, the, if you were talking about data masking for uh, security purposes, so Alexio does provide encryption for your traffic. Uh, data masking is a functionality that is on a layer above Alexio. So if your compute framework uh, uh, integrates with a policy engine which supports data masking, and Alexio will, and your solution as a whole would still support data masking. So if Presto integrates with um, your uh, policy engine of choice which supports data masking, uh, when accessed through Presto, you will still see data masking, but Alexio on its own does not have support for data masking. Great. Uh, our next question here is for Matthew. Um, how would one move the data from on-prem to GCS? And related to that, once the data is copied, can you keep the data in sync between on-prem and in GCS? Yeah, there, there are different options. So we have a few papers online. Um, so either uh, you can use a cluster to actually uh, use the GCS connector and copy the data, so you can actually push it to GCS, or you could do the other way around, which would be uh, if you decided to move the, the data again without an issue, uh, you could pull uh, the data from um, a data pro cluster that will run in the cloud and then we save it to GCS. Knowing that GCS is generally uh, the recommended approach when you use data proc to, uh, to store data. Um, or you can also use like uh, libraries to and the GCS util uh, tool to actually uh, copy dump of data directly to GCS. So depending on the use case, there are different options. Um, all of them have pros and cons, so generally it's something we will discuss with the customer. Great, thank you. Um, our next question here uh, for Edit is, how can we integrate Alexio with cloud storage? Do we need to run a 24-7 Alexio cluster? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question, but let me try to answer that question to the best of my understanding. Uh, so Aluxio uh, can be integrated with Google Cloud uh, on demand. So uh, Amelia, uh, uh, sorry, do you mind repeating the question just to make sure if I can understand it better? Absolutely. The question was, how can we integrate Alexio with the cloud storage? Do we need to run a 24 by 7 Alexio cluster? Okay, uh, thanks, Amelia. So uh, once you launch a cluster in Dataproc uh, with Alexio on it, uh, and even if it's a short ephemeral cluster and not a long running cluster and it's not running for 24 hours, the first thing that Alexio would do uh, when a storage like cloud storage is mounted to Alexio would similar to the way that I talked about that Alexio synchronizes metadata with HDFS. Alexio will also, what it'll do is that everything, all of your data which resides in GCS is available for you to read as soon as the cluster is up. So you don't need to have the cluster running beforehand. So this is the concept that we talked about briefly that you mount your GCS bucket into Alexio and on access to paths in Alexio, which are backed by GCS, you would fetch that data from GCS into Alexio. So you actually don't even need to wait for a synchronization process for, for you to access data in GCS. You can simply launch the cluster and start accessing data through Alexio, assuming that it was present in GCS, the same way that you would access GCS directly. Great, thank you, Edith. Our next question here is, um, how much, oh, I'm sorry, uh, one second here. Oh, there we are. Do you provide any environment to evaluate Aluxio along with Dataproc? 
So I, I like that question. So uh, we actually have uh, recently published a tutorial with Google, which is the second uh, item listed on the additional resources page, which is part of the slides that we'll post. So don't worry about noting down the URL. So what this tutorial does is that you'll pretty much be able to do the same thing that we did for the demo today in a matter of uh, 20 minutes or so, assuming you have the right amount of quotas and limits for your, for running the amount of instances, the VMs that we need in Google Data Graph. So yeah, we do provide an environment for you to start testing it out. Uh, it's going to create a dummy on-premise uh, cluster, mocking an on-premise cluster, and the same two clusters that we used for the demo today. So you can choose to run that and uh, experiment with Aluxio in Data Proc, uh, running your jobs instead of the jobs that we ran in the demo today. Perfect. Um, we have time for uh, maybe one or two more questions here. Um, let me see. Okay, great. So here we have a follow-up question. Clusters on cloud are supposed to be ephemeral, but in order to get the caching in action, we can't decommission the nodes. Uh, what's your thought? That's actually a, uh, a, a great question. Uh, uh, sorry, Amelia, you were saying? Oh, I was just going to say, I believe that was directed at you. Please go ahead, it is. Yeah, so uh, like we talked about, in, if you remember the feature that we talked about before, uh, we talked about a few different features, the first three features, which are the, which highlight the caching ability. But the last feature that we talked about, which was policy-driven migration, is we also kind of touched upon the fact that the same location in Aluxio can be backed by multiple locations. So if your data is present both in HDFS and Google Cloud Storage, that data can actually be available for subsequent queries, even if it wasn't, if your Aluxio cluster was shut down and spawned back up, but you had already previously migrated your data from HDFS to Cloud Storage, you could, still access it as, uh, assuming that the data was present on premise but as Aluxio intercepted all those queries or jobs it's actually going to redirect it to cloud storage for the data that was already migrated so even for cases where your clusters are ephemeral you actually don't go back to the on-premise cluster you, you can if you had migrated some of your data to cloud storage and the data is not does not have to be the, at the granularity of a directory. So Aluxio is talking about the granularity of blocks within a file. So all of the blocks that you had migrated from Aluxio and you migrated that to objects in Google Cloud Storage, you will read that from Cloud Storage instead of hitting your on-premise infrastructure. Great, thank you, Adit. Our next question here is for Matthew. Uh, how do I create a set or workflow of data prop jobs? Uh, so there are there are features. There is a feature called a data flow and data proc workflow template, uh, which basically enables you to create a template for a DAG a directed acidic uh, graph. Uh, of jobs on the cluster um, and then you can actually leverage that feature to uh, run some jobs one after the others. Uh, the advantage is that you can actually, uh, once you have that declarative file, uh, it's a YAML file that uh, describes the, the DAG, uh, you can uh, actually leverage uh, APIs and then you can schedule it or you can actually run it from the Kubeflow pipeline if you're using uh, machine learning or from uh, any other trigger that uh, you might have. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, and with that, today we will be wrapping up the webinar. Um, thanks to everyone for attending. Uh, I hope we all learned something here. And a special thanks to Adit and Matthew for pr providing such great content and very cool demo.
Great. So I know there were a couple of questions that uh, we didn't get a chance to get to, uh, but please don't worry. You're still welcome to post your questions into the Alexio Community Slack channel, and we'll make sure you know the community will come out and help get those questions answered. Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys at our next event. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.